Hello everybody, this is uh, Wilfred Ling. Now many of my clients have feedback to me that uh, you know, investing in stocks is just too tedious. Now there are two ways to invest in stocks, right? One is uh, long-term value investing through fundamental analysis and the other way is uh, you know, uh, short-term trading through technical analysis. If you are doing fundamental analysis, you know, you have to do research in the company, you have to analyze the companies, uh, you know, and uh, yeah, and study the companies, which is tedious, time consuming. If you are doing trading, you have to monitor the, the stock prices on a very regular basis because uh, it's uh, of the time sensitive nature of trading. So, in, in either approach, it becomes uh, too tedious and troublesome. So, as a result, many people they, they either don't want to invest or after they invest, they neglect their portfolio. Um, now, it's true that you know, if you invest, you need to do some due diligence. You know? For me, I help my clients to do fundamental analysis for long term. Uh, and the approach is to find very good company with good fundamentals. Now, for the purpose of this video, uh, I want to demonstrate to you that actually uh, finding a good fundamentals is not so difficult. Okay, so let's let's assume let's do an experiment, right? Let's assume that you um, you just use four criteria, uh, just four criteria uh, in selecting stocks to invest. First will be a gross margin of above sixty percent, operating margin of above twenty percent, interest uh, interest coverage ratio of of, uh, uh, of 14 times and the return of capital employed to be, uh, to be 20% as shown in the first chart. Okay, In this chart, uh, the parameters that I will set to define what is so-called a good company. And let's say you invest in early 2008. So in early 2008, there are 40 companies with such a criteria as shown in the second chart. So in this second chart, there are 40 of such companies uh, and you invest at the beginning of 2008. Why beginning of 2008 is because this was the worst possible time to invest. Worst possible time because uh, if you invest uh, at the S&P 500 in the beginning of 2000, 2008, you will have suffered more than 50% loss as shown in the third chart. So let's say you invest in these 40 companies and then you just buy and hold. You, know? you don't monitor. You don't do anything to it. After uh, so many years, um, you know, in 2022, okay, the fourth chart shows you that your portfolio will have not only make positive return, however, you have surpassed the return of the S and P 500. As you know, that's why I'm showing you right now. So it's very interesting, right? That just four simple criteria, and you have actually surpassed more than. Uh, much more than the S&P 500. But let's look at greater details, right? Uh, at the end, at the 2022, right, uh, your 40 companies were reduced to 22 companies as shown in this fifth chart. So what happened? What happened to the rest? Right? What happened to the half of the portfolio? Now, the reason is that half of the stocks were either went bankrupt or yes, it was acquired. Now, if it's acquired, Usually it's a good thing because the acquiring company tend to overpay, so you know it tends to be a profitable deal. Um, of course, if it's gone bankrupt, then you have gone to zero. So in this uh, simulation, I assume that uh, when the stock is acquired, you you just uh, encash everything, right? Or it just become cash. So this buy and hold strategy has an issue, right? Although it gave very very good return, however. Um, your portfolio will have shrunk to just half, right? 40 to, to 22 stocks. So your portfolio will be very concentrated. And uh, certainly you do not want a concentrated uh, portfolio as, you know, uh, as the volatility and the risk get higher and higher. Now the second issue I, in, in, in buy and hold for so long is uh, because most investors are short term investors. Many investors are you know, just three months, six months kind of uh, you know, outlook. Um, has to do with, maybe it has to do with various factors. Most people are not very patient to wait for so long. Yeah, and uh, you know, prefer to make a fast one. Another reason for, for, for many individuals to be short-term investors is because of 
emotions, right? When you see losses, you become very emotional and become very upset. So that's why when the market is bad, uh, many people give up and then sell at a, at a loss. And when market is good, people just rush in and buy uh, because of emotions, right? Because you don't want to feel of losing out. So end up, a lot of individuals will just buy high and sell low purely because of emotions. Now, as a financial practitioner, it's my duty and it's my job to help my clients achieve their financial goals by having good investment return. However, not everyone will be uh, suitable to be, to will, will find my service to be suitable. If you are a short-term investor, it's not likely you'll find my service suitable as I intend to produce good results on a long-term basis. However, on a short-term basis, it may not uh, perform according to your expectation. Right? Another uh, reason why not everyone will find my service suitable is because of emotions. Right? So if you tend to be very emotional, uh, you'll find my service to be uh, not so suitable. Right? If you're on the other hand, you're a person who is a long-term investor, who are not uh, emotional due to short-term fluctuation, I will be interested to talk to you. Right, that's all for this short video. And if you want more information, do click on the link below. Bye.